Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about saws for cutting curves. Now the problem when you cut a curve is um, a wide saw plate will quickly jam if you try to turn the corner with it. So we're looking at saws which have narrower blades. And I've got on the bench in front of me the saws I use for making curves. It's not the complete selection that's available to woodworkers but I'll talk you through these and give you an idea of a couple of the others that are available. Now let me start with the pad saw or keyhole saw and here are two examples. The replaceable blades uh, range from about 9 to 12 inches in length and taper down from about 3 eighths of an inch. Main uses are for cutting keyhole slots, uh, cutting small inboard holes and for starting larger inboard holes uh, until a larger saw can be inserted. A drill is first used to make a hole through which the saw can be inserted and then obviously sawing can begin. I've actually got this installed in what is a pad handle for a hacksaw blade. It actually works really nicely. It's a very comfortable handle by clips. More traditionally, there'd be a wooden handle uh, with a brass section here with screws in it that hold the blade. This particular one's quite old and it's by Footprint Tools. And the blade can actually be reversed in the saw itself by loosening off these screws we can slide the blade out, turn it around, put it back into the handle and that helps protect the blade and it's very easy, much smaller to carry around with you in, a, uh, in your toolbox. You can install it the other way around so it will act as a pull saw rather than a push saw and that can be really handy at times. Now for slightly larger radiuses we come to what's known as the turning saw or compass saw. This one's by Diston, and you can see it's a relatively short blade. Now you can clearly see the blade is a lot wider than the pad saw blade, so the minimum radius is going to be a lot larger. Got an open handle to it, good grip, and uh, it's got a rip profile teeth on here, and it will very quickly cut you, say for example, a round coffee table. Now the next saw in that direction for larger radiuses would be the table saw. Now don't confuse that with the circular saw table, uh, which is generally called a table saw these days. This is a saw which is very much the same as this, just larger proportion to the blade. So a longer blade, a bit wider as well. And it be used and it gets its name from cutting large circles and ellipses on um, big dining room tables. Moving down towards the other end, we come to a set of saws which are very distinct because they have frames, metal frames. At the far end, for the very finest and tightest radiuses, we have what's known as a fret saw. Very thin blade, fine teeth, and a big sprung metal frame here which holds that blade nice and taut so that will cut uh, and stay nice and straight in the cut. Then I have what I know and, and call a jeweler's saw. Uh, There's some debate on whether that's actually the right name for it. I have quite a similar blade to the fret saw but obviously a, a much smaller frame and this is what I use pretty much always for cutting out the bottoms of dovetails in hardwoods. Now I can't rotate the blade in here so what I've done is I put a twist at both ends of the blade so it's not actually in the same plane as the frame. So when I cut my dovetails I can cut with the frame up above the work down to the base of the dovetail, twist it round and cut the waist with the frame above the end of the board. For slightly larger radiuses have what's known as a coping saw, exactly the same format, sprung metal frame, only on this one we can actually rotate the blade. So we can undo the handle a bit to loosen it, we can twist the blade so we can cut at different angles. And that's very handy. And that's the saw I use for cutting most of my curves in wood. To use the fret saw, I'll just rest my work off the edge of the bench top 
hold it tight. You can clamp it if you like, but generally you want to keep where you're cutting quite close to the bench, so you'll probably want to be moving it as you go. Hold the saw up to the work, get it started, just moving up and down. You can see I can twist the frame round as I cut. Backing out of the cut can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. What I've reached here is the limitation of the frame. It just doesn't fit past the end of the work, so I'll have to work from the other direction. So you can see we can get uh, nice tight radiuses with the fret saw. Now the jeweler's saw is very similar but um, because of the small frame it's difficult to turn in the work unless you're just working close to edges. With the coping saw we can set the blade to what's a good angle for entering the cut and for probably even completing the cut in many cases. Or sometimes we'll get into the middle of the cut and we'll have to then stop for a while, change the direction of the, the frame and blade and continue the cut. But the process of cutting is pretty much the same. We can do it off the edge of the bench. <laughs> Or we can actually clamp it in the vise and do it vertically. Now, I've been working off the edge of my workbench, but I've actually been using my Sawyer's bench. Let me just show you. So I'm sitting on my Sawyer's bench, and that just puts me at a nice height, gets my elbow down below the work, and makes for a much easier sawing. Alternatively, you can put the sawyer's bench on top of your workbench, hold the work on top of that, and work whilst you're standing up. The keyhole or pad saw can be used either in the vise or working down on a sawyer's bench. Well, I'm trying to cut now pretty much the tightest radius that I can do with this saw and you can see it's, uh, it's a lot bigger radius than I've managed with the, with the other frame saws. I used the word frame saw when I was talking about the fret saw, jeweler's saw and the coping saw because obviously it's got a metal frame. Another type of saw for curb work is actually called the frame saw and it's made from wood, it's also known as bow saw. Well, you have an H section which holds the blade down one end of the open H and it's tensioned by tightening up the opposite side of the open H, usually with a cord which is twisted round and round. Now I don't have one of those but I think it would be quite nice to make one and perhaps as part of this series uh, we'll dedicate one episode to actually making a frame saw. Now a compass saw or turning saw can be used at a vise but to be honest it's a lot easier to use it on a sawyer's bench. Normally they'd be used for cutting the outside curves on tabletops, little occasional tables etc. So we'll try and mimic that. We'll try and put a curve Something like so. So 
think you can see that's quite a um, shallow curve. Probably the best we could do would be perhaps an 18 inch diameter tabletop. Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!